So what was the inspiration to create this library? The inspiration for the RAIN library came from my frustration looking for immersive RAINs. And what I discovered, even as I went through my own libraries, as well as commercial libraries I've purchased and that I've used in the past, is that most RAIN was mono or stereo and was usually recorded by pointing at RAIN, pointing a microphone at the RAIN, and it was always the sound that was in front of you because, of course, when you record, you don't want to be out and getting wet and your microphone's getting wet. And I thought, I couldn't find immersive RAIN. I couldn't find anything in 5.1 or 7.1 or 7.0 or 7.12. And I thought, this, this is something I need to start recording. I need to start capturing rain immersively and start capturing rain with the kind of textures I'm looking for. Um, one of the challenges with rain and most rain recordings is that it's a very broadband sound. It's, it's a noise-based sound. And if you listen to most rains, and you're not really being critical with your listening, it sounds like it doesn't have texture and more importantly, rain does, most rain recordings don't sound wet. And that's a function of having the right microphones in the right place um, um, and with the right environment to capture that kind of sound. So I set about, I live in Southern California, this is a fool's errand, <laughs> recording rain in one of the driest parts of the United States. But as would happen in early 2019, we had one of the biggest deluges in, in Southern California history that allowed me to go out and capture a great deal of the uh, rain library. Not all of it was captured during that rain. Some of it's been captured during this recent deluge um, that we've had and one that we had last year. And that would see me go out into the field and get drenched. I mean, there's, there's no way around capturing rain immersively without getting wet because I need to record in front of me, on the sides of me, and behind me. That means my microphones need to be out in the middle of rain. So it's capturing, you know, in, in th 360 degrees. So that meant um, casting locations, being willing to get drenched, and maybe building some hardware and technology that allowed me to do that without compromising my equipment. Why do you think this uh, particular library will be useful for sound artists? Well, first and foremost, it's an immersive rain library. I hadn't seen one. One may exist, but this one was captured specifically to be immersive. So if you have a scene of people out in the world and rain is falling on them, this is a great uh, collection of sounds to use that puts the audience in the middle of the rain just like the characters are. The mics were capturing the rain in front of me and behind me and to the sides of me and above me in some cases. And why is it good to have like a variety of sounds of rain as far as storytelling goes and using it in films and different uses? Well, the variety starts with usually the surfaces. I mean, you want rain is very useful if you have it on concrete and you have it on grass and you have it on dirt and you have it on mud and you have it on tin roof and you have it on asphalt roof and you have it on wood and you have it on leaves and trees. So a, a big part of the challenge is capturing the variety of textures that you want out of the rain. And then, of course, there's, there's volume, the volume of the rain, not the loudness of the rain. Um, you have light rain, heavy rain, medium rain, drizzly rain, drippy rain. And then you multiply that by the numbers of textures that I just enumerated. And you can see that this can be a, a, a quite an undertaking to capture the kind of variety that most sound designers are looking for or, or need to be able to choose from. My child. <laughs> so this is uh, my rain recording rig. This is a piece of hardware that I developed so that I could achieve uh, a surround sound rain capture by allowing me to put microphones in the middle of rain instead of pointing at rain and capture in 360 degrees. That meant I had to figure out a way to keep rain from falling on the microphone, which meant a cover, but a cover that wouldn't, um, that would be sonically um, inert. If you put a piece of wood here or a piece of plastic, you would hear the rain ticking on the protection. So I had to find a way to dampen the rain so that it didn't transmit through the bottom 
to the microphones that were uh, mounted here. So that meant finding uh, a suitable absorptive material uh, that didn't cause a splatter. And then once doing that, because this would eventually saturate with rain, I could only be out in a, in a big rain about 20 minutes before I would have to pull this out and wring it out like a sponge, but allowed this to absorb rain for about 20 minutes. And then there's this very inert rubber underneath that separated this from transmitting to this, which would transmit to the microphones. So that meant that underneath here, this could, what you're trying to separate you from is the sound of the rain transmitting through this material through to a microphone that could capture it. So there, this is virtually dampened. The, the signal to noise here of, you know, 25 dB here is about zero here. And so I would plant microphones in this area, and then this would go out into the middle of a field or a parking lot or a forest and, along with me. And this then I, w I, had, I didn't bring with me the custom rainproofed cables that would go to my recorder, which would be underneath a rain jacket of mine with about 20 feet of cable because this would also pick up the rain splattering on me. So to do this correctly, I also had to wear an absorptive material, which means I couldn't wear a raincoat. So I could go out with this for 20 minutes. This would soak up for 20 minutes. My jacket, which was soft cotton, would soak for 20 minutes. And then we'd all have to go indoors and change and ring out and then go back out and plant this down into some location. So these sounds that I'm going to play, are they... Were they all recorded with this rig? No. Um, sometimes, especially some of the forest recordings, there's enough tree cover with enough high foliage that's damping the, the rain. So I, I could usually scout a spot that was under a tree with enough branches and leaves that gave me a satisfying recording um, without having to use the rig. What does that evoke for you? <laughs> That's first of all, it's a it's a pretty serious deluge. You can hear the the very thick, rich, dense rain splatting on concrete and an overhang of some kind. I hear two different sounds there, but that is an example of rain that sounds very wet because it's puddling. Um, that wouldn't be what you'd hear if you're outdoors in a medium rain on say grass. Or, or weeds or, or a flower bed, which would absorb that splatter. And all you'd really hear is this kind of broadband white noise hiss. That's a great thick, wet rain that also implies there's a structure nearby that rain is rolling off of. So here's the second sound. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly rain on metal. I don't remember that this wasn't my car. I don't remember the surface that this was dribbling on. What's odd about it is it doesn't sound random. That sounds like a very almost mathematical rain, like this is something I like a rain I might have built a rainmaker to create that by dropping droplets on a metallic surface. It doesn't sound like natural rain. I don't remember which rain that is. So it's called rain on plate steel, but it also says synth. Synth. That might mean I captured this not with an acoustic rig, but with a contact mic. I remember doing a series. Some, some rains I have in the library are cheated by dropping um, seeds because seeds give you this very percussive hit if you want something really dense, like if you needed to... This might have been something I did to fake the sound of hail. It might have been chia seeds dropped on a metallic surface with either a contact mic or a, an acoustic mic underneath so that you got that real, really percussive, almost like drumming on the surface. Well, that's, that's an indoor rain. Um, I presume it is. I mean, that's a little computer speaker, but that yeah. sounds deeply muffled, and it sounds like my bedroom roof. It's raining heavy, and I'm indoors, and I'm pointing at uh, rain on roof. 
So it's the it's indoor car. Oh, all right. That's inside of my Chevy Volt. Yeah, right. And was that <laughs> was that rain? I think it was a hose, right? Is that the videos of you with the? Orthea if it, with the it hose? depends on which one. Um, the we have video of that, in fact, and we did rain on windshield, rain on hood, rain on trunk, from the inside of the vehicle. And some of those are real rains. The real rains on interior of vehicle were done inside my Chevy Volt. Um, the staged ones were done inside of my wife's Honda Element. And that we used a hose with like a, you know, a flower bed sprayer head on and we just shower the, the top of the car and put the mics on the inside. Okay. You made me feel like I was actually driving through a rainstorm. <laughs> But I guess there were times when it was naturally raining and you just went into the car and turned it on. A lot. It just drove my wife crazy for a couple of years. Every time it rained, I'd get up and I'd usually have a rig next to the bed and I'd get in my car or I'd run outside in the yard to capture some, some aspect of it. It's complicated to record rain in Los Angeles because we live in such a noisy, pollution, polluted, sound-polluted environment. So a good deal of this would happen at 2 and 3 in the morning. Uh, during the day, if it rained, it was a no-go. Um, there's just too much air traffic, too many cars driving by. And I, what I ended up doing was casting locations within about a 20 or 30-mile radius of my house. Parking lots of big box stores were a favorite target because they had vast expanses of concrete, which made a great surface for the rain. And that meant I had a perimeter where I knew vehicles wouldn't be coming very close to me. And I could just plunk myself down, put my rig out, get out in the rain, capture for a couple hours, come home drenched, crawl back into bed. It's a really evocative, but what what is that print? That sounds like rain on glass window or or like one of my big living room windows. I can't remember. It's on a windshield while driving. Oh, I, yeah, I did a whole series. I, you know, that's the funny thing about rain. Um, you know, most of us record rain and we think of it as this static event, but I wanted to impart some movement in it. You know, if you had a scene of somebody driving in the rain, you'd probably go to your library and get your favorite rain on glass or something like that or rain on windshield, and everybody records those stationary because it's a lot easier to do that. I didn't bring it with me, but I also built a suction cup rig for my microphones that I could attach to the um, inside of my front windshield, and I had this giant, you know, eight-channel microphone that I could barely see around as I drove. And so whenever I got a really good rain, I'd get out in the car and stick that to the windshield, and I'd drive because I wanted to hear rain dynamically pelting the windshield, not rain falling on it, but rain hitting it at velocity. It's a very different sound, and you get that mix of um, a much more higher, because it's the speed of the car against the speed of the rain, um, and you also get the sound of the rain on the sort of the hood of the car, but most of it's on the glass. That's what that was. A lot of driving around in the rain. I forgot about that one. And that's important to have an electric car when you're doing that? Well, good point. Thankfully, I have uh, a Chevy Volt electric car, so there's virtually no engine noise. There is a significant amount of uh, tire whine, and, you know, and especially in the rain, you'll hear the tires, but at least I could eliminate the engine sound. Sometimes I would, I would, I got some really good sounds. I don't know if they're in this library by getting the car up to speed and then taking it out of drive and just letting it coast really fast in the rain. That, that yielded some interesting results. I think you were telling me a story where you would do that. That's how you would get really good tire screeches as well. It's a good way. Shutting it off. Yeah. Yeah. That's another part of, I don't know if it's part of this rain library, but there's also recordings I made of just driving in the rain in traffic, and so I planted the mic inside of the car and took all the windows down because I wanted to hear that kind of shushy as cars or trucks drove by, by me, and I'd do that on surface streets, and I'd do that on the freeways in Los Angeles um, with the windows down, so of course that would make a mess of my car, and a lot of wiping down after that adventure. Yeah. <laughs> That's great.
Um, I think this rain library is, is pretty useful because, for me, it's certainly the wettest rains. And that, uh, for some reason, as a sound designer, I'm always looking for wet rains versus the noisy rains, the shh. The bacon sizzle. Yeah, the bacon sizzle. That, you know, and that, you always, you fight that in a mix. It, the, often you put up, you know it's a big, dense rain. You know you recorded it and you were there when you did it. And you put it up and the, the filmmakers say, well, what's that hiss? Well, that's rain. Well, let me hear it. Oh, now I hear it. But when it beds with dialogue and music, it just sounds like, bad tape hiss. And so I think this is a very useful library because this, these recordings sound, I think, a lot wetter than most traditional recordings. 